Hey, 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 welcome back to Content Creation Made Easy. I'm back this week again with Claudia Shocks, who is my business bestie. We talk every single week and we unpack stuff that's going on in our businesses. And what we realized is a lot of the stuff that's going on for our clients, um, we could address. And that's why we're having these conversations. We are um, offering a program this summer called the Your, Personal, Your Personalized Marketing toolbox. And there's some foundational stuff about marketing that we know is super boring, super unsexy, but if you don't do it, it's a gigantic pain in the ass in your marketing. So we thought we would just come on the podcast and unpack some of this stuff so that you can start thinking about it. You can start implementing it. And we thought, thought if we could do it in a conversational way, it might make it easier for you to kind of chew on and get something out of it. So that's what we're doing here today. Today, we are talking about the nuanced difference between strategy and tactics. And people in the online world flip-flop these all the time. They use them interchangeably. People will talk about strategy when they really mean tactics. And I have to admit, I do it too. And Claudia is always calling me, no, 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 no. That is a tactic, not a strategy. So I thought, why don't I just bring her on and let her yell at everybody about strategy versus tactics. But again, in our program, one of the things you're going to walk away from the toolbox with is a marketing strategy and a marketing plan. And you might be thinking like, what the hell is the difference between the two of those? And it's important to understand the difference. Why? Because your marketing probably feels really freaking hard. And this switch alone can help you immensely. So Claudia, hello, my love. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for amplifying the ground of people I can shout to. <laughs> Shouting it. In her Dutch, her direct Dutch way, she's going to give us, a, she's going to school us on this idea. Pull, okay. Pull your ears. So t- let's like, why don't you just lay out the problem for us? Well, the problem is that um, marketing can be very hard and very boring sometimes, you know? So <laughs> let's call it out. <laughs> so um, we are pressed by the fact that we want to have profit or want to get any form of result. So we tend to take action, whatever that action is. And the problem is if that action doesn't fall into kind of a plan, then how do you know where that action is leading you to and what is it contributing to the overall health of your business? Mm -hmm. So for instance, a lot of people start like, I am going to do a Facebook ads campaign. I am going to write 20 blogs, but <clears throat> in which context are you going to do that? To, to what end are what you end? going to do that? Mm-hmm. So the, I am going to do this and that, those are tactics. And if they are floating without you know, some cohesion, mm-hmm. then that's when marketing becomes hard and becomes annoying and become so frustrating because you're really putting the work, you're really putting the money, you're paying the Facebook ads, yeah. but you're not seeing the results. Everything that the gurus promise you that your life will be easier, you will have more time, yada, 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 doesn't crystallize. And it's because those actions, those steps don't have a cohesive thing that glues them together and allow you to grow your business. Would, so, you, would you say that's this, would you say that's, having a purpose knowing the why uh, no, kind of but okay. what i would say is the role of marketing is to help you achieve your business goals by reaching your ideal clients and convert them from potential clients to clients okay that is the role of marketing so The moment you do marketing and you don't tie it to your business goals, there you are starting to go wrong. And that's when marketing becomes, starts to become very hard. So the first thing you have to do is say, okay, what are my business goals? Do I want to increase my profit in 20% by the end of December, 2022? Okay. I want more money in the drawer. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much more money do you want? And by when? So it needs to be measurable because otherwise it becomes very, very dreamy. So knowing that you want to achieve more money, so much more money, 
then you ask yourself, how am I going to achieve that? Right. Okay. And that general thing, that is your marketing strategy. It's the guideline how of the actions you will take. I feel like people can can say, I want a 20% increase in sales. I want to work with 10 people this, this quarter. I feel like they could do that m- measurable goal setting. Yes. But then you said, how are you going to get there? And I feel like that's where we should have inserted the cricket sound into the podcast. <laughs> that's the strategy. Because... The strategy is the approach we're going to take to reach the goal. Okay. Can you break this down with an example? Yes. So for instance, if you want to achieve more profits, right? Like we said, 20% more profit by the end of December 22, you have to put kind of guidelines what you can do and what you cannot do. Okay. So for instance, a strategy would be, we're, we're going to leverage on our existing assets website, blog, mailing list, and use organic growth. So that already tells you that money will be used in a given way Mm. and we're going to recycle. We're not going to do a new branding campaign. We're not going to do... So that gives you the kind of, you know, playground where you're going to move. This is this is like putting bumpers and the Netherlands when you guys go bowling. Do you can you put the bumpers in the yeah, exactly? Okay. okay, so this is like what that does, and I'm feeling like that would be so helpful because it takes away the possibility of everything. I have to do yeah. everything. Like, okay, I want a twenty percent increase by the end of December, the end of twenty twenty two. So these are what I'm going to use. What I'm not going to even look at are a new logo, new brand colors, Facebook ads, uh, pitching myself to media. Like we're not looking at that. We're only using the existing assets and double downing on them. Exactly. So if that is is your strategy, you already have, like you said, the bumpers, you know, the sandbox, the sandbox where you're going to play. Yes, I love that. Okay. Okay. So that is the difference between, well, that is what a strategy looks like. Yeah. The other thing I really want people to take away from this is it's not, you did not make that complicated. No. And do you see. That's the way you and I work. We simplify things. (laughs) Now, do you, when you have clients and you're like, I'm going to, we're going to create a marketing strategy for you. Do they then ever kind of rage against They're Like, but what if this, and what if that? And I would have had this idea in the middle of the night. What happens when that happens? Of course, of course. (laughs) Or they roll their eyes and say, ah. That's it. That's so boring. That's so yeah. Boring. I mean, and not, but you know, um, the moment you explain the difference and f- things, and you had hold, you know, it's not that we say this is what it is, and then we leave you to do it on your own. I tell you, you and I tell them what it is, and then we are going to work on how it applies to your specific situation. Yes. Because if you've been in business for two, three years you might or might not have a mailing list. You might have been dutiful enough and have a mailing list or not. So, you know, then a strategy of using your existing assets has a hole. (laughs) Because you don't have a mailing list. Sometimes I'll hear people say something like, I want to get five more clients and my strategy is I'm going to do reels every day on Instagram. What's, What's wrong with that? Okay, the reels on Instagram is a tactic. It's a, it's a step. Because then you ask yourself, okay, what, are, what do those reels have to deliver you? Mm-hmm. And are the reels going to deliver you the five more clients? I doubt it. So but it's a tactic. If, if they want the five more clients as a business goal, because that will deliver them so much money or so much more happiness or whatever, then you have to ask yourself, what do I need to have those five more clients? Usually you need visibility. Yeah. And you need authority. Mm -hmm. So you say, I am going to leverage or increase my visibility and my authority. And then you can say using new media or using existing media or whatever. I love that. You're again delimiting your sandbox. 
limiting your sandbox is really important because I think what happens is when people think they have a strategy and it's quote unquote not working, then they get that like gasping for air feeling. And they're like, what else can I be doing? And then they get friggin' exhausted. Yeah. And that's where marketing becomes frustrated because you don't have the sandbox and then you are like throwing things in and out. So once you have the sandbox, which is I have to increase visibility and I have to increase my authority. And then you decide by putting more money on it or less money on it. So organically or inorganically, right? Right. Then you can say, okay, how do I achieve that visibility? Yeah. What is in there to achieve that visibility? And then you can say, okay, I need more visibility on social media, or I need more, vis- more visibility on my speaking gigs, or I need uh, to close. So if it depends who you are. So for instance, if you're a social media person, most probably your tactics and your strategy will be relying more on social media and that kind of content. But if you're somebody who gives speak, uh, you thrive on speaking gigs, you know, maybe your strat, your tactics will be better call to actions when mm-hmm. I deliver my pitch, you know, or managing my pitch. And that is more, much more of a tactic. So it really depends. And that's why you need to know where are you, what are your strengths? What, because that's the other ingredient in marketing that allows you to be consistent. So you need to know what you like to do and create a strategy based on that. That's, so it, that's folded in. Yeah. It's not always folded in when you don't consider it. So one of the, the one of the bases of our program this summer is understanding your marketing strengths so that we can create a personalized strategy for you that okay. doesn't feel like you're drowning all the time. Exactly. Right. And the the interesting thing about this is that once you have a strategy, you really start to see the return on investment because you know where your money is going to, you know what your money is doing. You get your time back because the moment things are not going the way you want them to go, you know exactly where you need to course correct. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. say, okay, my visibility sucks. Okay, I need to review. But then you know where to review. It also gives you focus because you will know what to do every day. Instead of like, ah, what am I going to do today? You go into some Facebook groups and bop around on Facebook or whatever. You know, what we talked about last week with the understanding your audience, understanding your clients, the niche versus demographics versus, you know, the marketing message, all of that stuff. It's... Until you have that piece done, you really can't create a strategy, can you? No, no. You need to have your very present who your ideal client is. Yeah. And you need to know what your message to that ideal client is. When you you have that, when you have that, you can move on to a strategy. And when you have the strategy, you know the, 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 the role that content plays into that strategy. So yeah. then you know exactly what you need to be writing or creating content about. You also know where you have to be, right? Right. And you know which words to use and everything. Well, that's your area. But that, that, and the problem is when you pull out one of these elements, then you start having holes in your marketing mm-hmm. and then marketing becomes frustrating, becomes hard, becomes complicated. But when you have the basics, it's like you can build a house, uh, you know, without foundations. Have you ever played Jenga? You know, yeah. those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly the same thing. The moment you start pulling pieces from the, from the bottom, your tower falls apart. doesn't matter how many holes you have on the top, but the moment you start pulling the pieces from the base, your tower starts to to be unstable and it's exactly the same thing so you need you to have, have foundations in place you have a really good visual that you can t- talk people through it's the the problem is or the the goal is i want to get to the other side of this river uh, the one of the treasure map yes yeah so can you talk about can you unpack that for us in terms of strategy versus tactics and then we're going to talk about a plan and you want it with the island, with, with the, the same uh, treasure how map? They, or you want yeah, how they get across the, how do you get across okay. the river? So let's suppose you are in, uh, in the middle of the desert, right? 
and there is a river. So at some point you will need to cross the river. There, um, there are also palm trees and there is also a county of a mountain. So you, this possible strategies are climb the palm trees in 20 minutes and get the coconuts. The other strategy could be get to the top of the mountain. And the other strategy could be be on the other side of the river. So those are different strategies. Mm -hmm. you the, uh, <clears throat> so the goal is getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. The strategy is deciding where. So we decided we're going to the other side of the river. That's the strategy. We'll get to the other side of the river safe and fast. Okay. Because it needs to be measurable. Right. When you know that you have to go, that you're going to cross the river, and it has to be safe and fast. That already tells you, you cannot go by swimming because there might be piranhas in the river and you won't make it safe. Okay. Or you can't have like a floating wood because that's not safe, neither fast. Okay. So then you know you need a boat mm -hmm. to get you to the other side, okay? You could also have an airplane if you have the means, or you can also find an elephant or a camel that cross you. But you need to wear, bear in mind that it needs to be fast and safe. Okay. So that, that is your, uh, your playground. Okay. You're going to cross the river fast and safe. So the boat is kind of uh, the objective. The you tactic? Know, going, no, well, let, okay, let's, let's jump to the, to the tactic. The boat, the... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so you need to start to think of steps to achieve that goal, okay? okay? So you get, the, the, the boat would be the tactic, sorry. The, the boat would be the tactic, a plane would be the tactic, an elephant would be the tactic. Okay. So that is how you do it. You need to, um, you need to see what, what is what you want to do, how you want to do it in, in function of your playground. Yes. So that is well, it's a bit confusing, right? No, it makes a lot of sense to me because the tactic is how you're going to achieve the goal and it's the choice that you make. And once you commit to the choice, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. That's your tactic. Yeah. And I think that many people confuse those things when they're doing their marketing and it really depletes them because it feels mm -hmm. like you are spinning a thousand plates rather than like really being focused and letting go of the things that aren't part of your strategy. Yeah, definitely. So for instance, if you if you go back to the to the twenty percent more profit in twenty twenty two, the strategy would be like okay we're going to use our existing marketing assets and organic growth. So that already tells you what kind of things you need to think of, right? right. So um, so it means you need to increase leads, you need to improve your brand reputation because you need visibility. If you want if you want to grow your your profit, you need visibility. So a tactic there could be uh, publish weekly blogs to organically bring people into our website through search engine optimization and establish ourselves as, as thought leaders. Yes. And that's the tactic. That's so clear. I love that. That's, I think that's really helpful. Can we shift into talking? Because that's one of the things we're going to do for with people mm -hmm. in, the, in the toolbox program. But the other thing that we talk about offering is a plan and yeah. how I think people confuse plan and strategy also. So what's the difference between a strategy and a plan? Well, the strategy then again is the sandbox, your, you know, the guidelines, yeah. how you, what you, you, how you're going to achieve your goals. And the plan is the group of tactics you're going to put in place. So you might have tactics for your social media. You might have tactics for your mailing list. You might have tactics for your website or for your blogs or for other contents or for your speaking gigs. The group of that things and what you want to achieve with each tactic. So making it measurable, right? Because I can write a weekly blog, but how do I know that my weekly blog is delivering me results? It's because I want you know, I need to see it somewhere, more clicks, more converts, more signups, whatever. So it's the, the full uh, group of things, the steps that you're going to take, that is your plan. So that's pretty micro and personalized. Yeah. And also the other thing I'm hearing you saying is your plan can't be 
vague. It can't be like, oh, I'll just post on Instagram three times a week. Like you need to understand what you will be posting on Instagram, when you will be posting, what you need to do, what kind of calls to action, like all of those, it just, it gets very micro. Yeah. 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 And again, I think people get tired because it does need to be micro and they're trying to be everywhere and they're conflating Mm -hmm. tactics and strategies and plans. Oh my, like they just are trying to do too much rather than having it all parsed out. Like you've explained it to us today, which I think is really helpful. So for instance, if you know you need visibility, then again, right. You can say, okay, I don't have a mailing list. Yes. Then you can decide, okay, how is a mailing list going to help me with that visibility? Is it worth starting a mailing list or not? Between parentheses, it's always worth starting a mailing list because it's your asset. It's your way straight to an inbox. But if you're not ready to start a mailing list, it's also very valid. Then we look at different ways to get you into into that visibility. So we would need, you go, okay, I have a wonderful audience in Instagram. So what we will see in your case is, okay, how can we extrapolate that so that you can leverage more on that? And is this audience just following you or are they interacting with you? Because then the next step would be generating interaction with that audience. But that's a tactic if you know what, what you need that audience to do for you. I love the explanation here. Let me give an example. Um, I have clients who don't have, so in their mind, they're like, I need a lead magnet that needs to be part of my plan. Um, And so they'll do all of this work on the lead magnet to get people into their, onto their email list. And then they will not email the people on their email list. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why have you put so much effort into that piece when overall you're not going to be working that into your plan? So we really have to think about what, like the Instagram is a great example. I have a client who, she has an incredibly, she grew her Instagram following so fast. It's incredibly engaged. That's where she's gotten most of the people for her new program. And that is where her people are. And so she just really leans into that with, Yes, but in her case, you know, I would like that she thinks about uh, strengthening that because the moment Instagram changed the game of the the, the rule games, she might risk losing all the work she has done. I 1000% agree. I would think, okay, if this is like your door opener, how can we move these people somewhere else, you know, so that whatever happens to your Instagram, you still have contact with these people because I agree. Yeah. The, the important thing there is there are two assets in, in sort two types of assets are the ones you own and the mm-hmm. ones that you don't own. And social media is an asset you don't own. Right. Your mailing list, your blog, your website are assets you own. So ideally you need a good balance because without nowadays the way all these things are intertwined using leveraging on social media helps you to get faster to where you want to go if you know what you're doing otherwise it's lost time so but but having all your stuff in an asset that you don't own is very risky so in her case i would see okay how can we strengthen what you already have that would be part of her strategy definitely right But I do think that sometimes people don't have the capacity to consider all of those things at once. And so Mm -hmm. part of what we're going to do in the toolbox is really assess where are you now? What assets do you have? And what's your capacity and what are we leaning into? Yeah, and what's the first step you need to take? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's important. Anything else about this? I think this has been really helpful, but anything else you want to say about strategy versus tactics versus plan? Uh, Yes, then again, have the long term view how this is going to help your business, because having a strategy allows you to simplify your life, you know, Mm -hmm. then you know, every day what you have to do that saves you enormous amount of time and frustration, because it also helps you to stay focused, helps your team if you're working with a team helps you or if you only have a VA or you, you have an intern or somebody who's helping you, you know, helps everybody to stay focused. And then as, as a consequence, you will see your return on investment in everything you put into it, yeah. you know, in time, in the quality of the leads you attract, the people you bring to your attract to your business and the money, last but not least. Yeah. 
Thanks, Claudia. If you are interested in becoming part of the Toolbox experience, it's an eight week live experience where we are working with you. There'll be time for implementation. You'll walk away with a strategy that's personalized. You'll understand the tactics that work for you and you'll have a plan. So you know what you're doing every day and you don't wake up going, um, what do I feel like trying today? It doesn't work like that. And so go to genlity.com slash toolbox to learn more about whether this program is right for you. Claudia and I are doing calls to see if it's a good fit. This is the first time we're running it. You'll find it's a beta price of $1,800 for eight weeks of two experts and their eyes on your work. And you walk away with a not only all of this foundational stuff done for your content planning and strategy and the tactics, but also a complete content vault that you can apply across everything you have in your business. So it's quite, a, we're excited about it. It's going to be an amazing yeah. live program. And if you want, that. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good, good, uh, like imagine walking away with a vault of all of that stuff. Um, again, you can go to genlity.com forward slash toolbox and the information will be there. Thank you again, Claudia, for unpacking yeah. all of this. You always have this very incisive way with your examples and your clarity to help us kind of see what has gotten a little bit murky in the in the marketing ocean. I appreciate nothing it. Nothing to envy because you have it exactly the same with content. So nothing to envy. <laughs> That's why we're good yin and yang for each other. <laughs> all right, everybody. I will look forward to seeing you next week on the podcast when we're going to bring you more about marketing and content and helping you clear up some of your confusion. Bye. Bye.